FAR is a wholesaler supplying a chain of franchisee-owned stores. Many spa stores have an associated Build It store. That's for the DIY requirements. It has a market cap of 19.6 billion rand, price to earnings ratio of 17.5 and a dividend yield of 3.4%. I'm not even going to ask Daniel if he goes to Build It. We know that he clearly does not visit any of these stores. Paul, Build It versus mm, Builders no, Warehouse? He is, because he's a bachelor, he's always at the top's end of every spa, not at the uh, Build It. But look, as far as this one is concerned, in the urban areas, they're not that visible, but spa's got this fantastic distribution profile in secondary and sort of tertiary towns in South Africa. So in those contexts, they do do well, and they compete with you know, some of the uh, sort of owner-managed traders and that sort of thing. So again, a part of this business which has grown well and which definitely, in my opinion, adds to the attractiveness of SPA's counter at the top level. Daniel, do you believe it adds to SPA's attractiveness? Uh, yes, definitely. I mean, much like MassMart, it adds that extra, that extra dimension into a market where there's cle clearly demand. Uh, there are some issues in that space. Demand might be slowing down to some degrees, pressure in the lower income. But I think it's nice to have that exposure. Now just looking at the share price action there, Paul, the, the pullback not as dramatic as that we've, that we've seen in, in mass March. Yeah, I think it's because the margins are different and there weren't such high expectations. Uh, <coughs> Durban-based spa has always suffered from a little bit of kind of being slightly ignored by the investment community in Johannesburg and in, uh, and in Cape Town. But I think Wayne Hook is still at the helm. He is. And look, it's a great team. They came out of Tiger, they adopted their own sort of space in the marketplace. A different capital structure we know because obviously the stores are typically owned and leased and operated by the actual franchisees rather than the central group. So it has more characteristics of a wholesale distribution business. But there's nothing wrong with that. It's got uh, lots of Africa potential. I like the fact that the footprint is good in the peri-urban and sort of rural areas. So I think it's a good mix. Again. Why don't they bulk up in this space by, you know, adding some of their uh, potential competitors? Well, Daniel, why don't they? I think it's quite difficult to find those competitors. I mean, you, you, you did see Steinbull do that with, uh, with hardware. Um, so to find those attractive acquisitions in this market, I think it's difficult. I think if you go for a larger player, which you might need to do, you'll end up spending too much. And in the end, how much you spend in the, in the beginning, like the mass mod share price, depends how much performance you get in the end. And if you spend too much, you're not going to get much performance. Are you expecting more downside on, on this share price, Daniel? I think, it's, I think it's highly likely that we could get some more downside. Uh, look, the, the situation for these retailers is, is tough at the moment. Um, another issue that you need to consider is that not all of SPA's franchise stores buy from SPA. Um, so if they can get a cheaper product from somewhere else, they will. Now, one example is that we've had quite cheap cement imports into the country. So guys can basically bypass SPA and go directly into the market. So that's also something to be, to be wary of. Paul, <coughs> hot or not on SPA and Wayne Hook and his team? Yeah, they've been a little bit out of the conversation recently. I know they bought in a few of their uh, substantial franchise operators because they kind of needed to and given the sites there. So I think it's in a bit of a holding pattern at the moment. I'm generally of the view though that one should take the opportunity to buy the dips with the retailers whose price has been But that weak, means so that you don't believe that the underlying consumer <coughs> in South Africa is in deep trouble? No, I don't believe that at all. I just think they're having a bit of a rest and that's in the nature of uh, retail behaviour and credit availability. So, you know... Daniel, yeah. do you buy that? The South African consumer is just resting? <laughs> uh, in a very deep rest. <laughs> <laughs> is it going to last <laughs> for, for a substantial <laughs> period of time, this rest? Like, is it uh, just sleeping or would you describe it more as sort of a coma? Uh, hibernating. You, know? you would expect them to be <laughs> out I'd of their say, hibernation I'd stage now. hibernation is a very good term for it. <laughs> well, but winter is nearly over. Hibernation sounds good. You know, hibernation only lasts for as long as the winter, right? Uh, this perfect. could be a summer hibernation well, for all we the, know. <laughs> the winter in this case could be the currency, which will throw a span into the mix with the uh, inflation rates. I mean, petrol might be going up again. So if you take into account that, for example, at the ShopRite presentation, they mentioned that now it costs the average shopper 10 rand to get to the store, 10 rand to get back, and the, the average basket, si basket size is 100 rand. So if guys are going to spend more on transport, more on other costs, they're going to have less and less for food, and you could see guys hibernating for a bit longer than expected. It sounds more, more, than, it sounds more trouble than hibernation, Paul. Hot or not? <coughs> no, they're just having an afternoon nap, the customers, so uh, I'm hot on this one too. Spa hot or not, Daniel? Uh, I'd say the consumer pressure could last for a bit longer, so I'd say hold off for now, not.